your your thoughts on the game. I thought that um, both teams made a couple of mistakes here and there, but neither team lost the game. You might disagree, but I just thought it was an incredibly entertaining piece of uh, piece of sports content that was on at three thirty seven on CBS. What did you think? Um, it was actually, it was on for me at noon since I'm in Arizona. I've got to um, know about West. I thought it was a, a great, I mean, overall a great game. I thought Alabama came out sloppy. Um, Tennessee capitalized on that. I think that as I you know tweeted during the game, I think if Hendon Hooker is not the number one Heisman prospect out there, um, I think that that's, that's a travesty. Because what he put out on the field and and how he played the game with as much composure as he played, it's that to me was was incredible. Um, watching him was a, a great like experience, seeing the the kind of performance that he put on. And then also, Tennessee's going to have to pay Josh Heupel more money because I mean he is he is a fantastic coach. He is ahead of the time. And I know we've always said, or I've always said that if you're going to beat Nick Saban, you have to do something to beat Nick Saban. You have to reinvent the game, kind of like Nick Saban did at Alabama with the defense. You have to reinvent that. And I think Heupel's done that. I mean, he's he's a solid, solid coach. I think that Tennessee fans should be very happy with what they have. You bring up a really good point. Nick Saban, he's the best defensive backs coach that has ever walked the face of the earth. And I do believe that uh, when they were a defensive-minded team, and they're a little bit of both now, um, but I do believe he was incredible at teaching his defensive backs how to use their hands below their shoulders and guide receivers that technically could have been called pass interference more often, but he had found that loophole. And as far as coverage schemes, I thought he was just way ahead of his scheme. He didn't know what he was doing based off the pre-snap looks. So, yes, I mean, maybe not as sexy for some fans as an offensive coach, but I thought he was way, way, way ahead of the game. And Josh Heibel, I think, is ahead of the game as well. Like you said, he reminds me of Steve Spurrier that wants to recruit, which that's a pretty scary commentary He, if, if you're in the East. He, I think... It's, it's not the same. It's not the fun and gun, but it's different. It's kind of like the veer spread out a little bit. And uh, as a whole, I think uh, Tennessee has a coach that, that likes to recruit. Is doing a good job, above average job. I don't know, an, an elite job yet like Alabama and Georgia have done over the past few years. But that does bring me to this, Amanda. When you watch those two teams on the same field, I think you and I would have agreed that there was a significant talent gap between the two teams. I didn't think it was as significant as I did in the preseason. Just looking at talent, no matter how they played necessarily, did you think there was a monster difference, a difference, or no difference at all? I mean, I think there was a monster difference, but I think Tennessee had the edge as far as receivers go. I mean, the the quarterbacks, you can, you know, I mean, they're pretty comparable. I think Bryce Young is, is a schematically and, and the, the things that he's able to do in the pocket, I think he's a better quarterback than Hendon Hooker is. I don't think he's playing better than Hendon Hooker is. I don't think that the offense that Josh Heupel is providing, you know, those offensive schemes, I think if Josh Heupel had Bryce Young, it would be insane. Like they would, it would be absolutely nuts. Um, again, I think Hendon Hooker should win the Heisman. Um, The biggest difference I saw between the two teams was Tennessee's wide receivers versus Alabama's wide receivers. There was no comparison whatsoever. I mean, Tennessee's Jalen Hyatt, and I said this before the game, would be the one to watch. You did call that, by the way. Amanda got major kudos by Caleb Jaru, and I like working his name in any time I can just because I like saying it, and I like Cajun food, and he's from uh, Louisiana. But major shout out, we talked about the most important player that's not a known commodity, which would be the hookers of the the world, those type of guys. And you said Jalen Hyatt. Well, uh, you're absolutely right. Maybe we have to take him off that list of being a known commodity after after Saturday, though. After five touchdowns in one game? 
I think he's <laughs> off the list of, of sneaking in for uh, into games and people not not aware of him or being surprised by him. I don't think anybody's going to be surprised by Jalen Hyatt anymore. No, and I think we're going to be having the conversation is, is he better than Cedric Tillman? I've told you before, I like Brew McCoy's upside. I think he's one of the most talented players on this entire team. But I, I still am not sure that he is not uh, – uh, that Jalen Hyatt's not right there, a lot closer than we thought. So uh, coming up, we will uh, visit with, I think Marlo McKinney's going to join us here shortly. He was at the game. And I'm not going to give away Marlon's age, but he's um, he, he's not a, a spring chicken like me. And uh, he jumped a wall and charged the field. And if I did that, I would be down and out. That would be the end of it. Uh, it would be hip surgery number two. Uh, it would it would not be good for Dave at all. So the down and thir- dirty at 30 is now. It's brought to you by Honey Bee Coffee. Amanda, why is Honey Bee Coffee so good? I mean, at the end of the day, it's just really good coffee. I mean, it just tastes really good. It's top 5% of the beans in the world. You can you can tell the difference between Honey Bee Coffee and Folgers or, or whatever, or the other place that you go with the green sign. Like you can just tell the difference between the two and, and Honey Bee far, far outranks them much better. Uh, absolutely. And like I said, a lot of coffee gives me headaches, but Amanda's uh, seen me down three cups and it was uh, unbelievably awesome and had a, a fantastic a couple of meetings now at Honey Bee Coffee. So I highly suggest it. You can order all of their goods online uh, and you can also... Uh, go to uh, their their website. Just Google Honey Bee Coffee and you'll be able to order it online. It is fantastically awesome. Uh, do, let's go to a couple of uh, notes from the, the message board real quick before we get to the down and dirty at 30. Uh, November the 5th, Tennessee at Georgia in Athens. ESPN College Game Day will be there. Plus, it will be a 3.30 or 8 o'clock kickoff on cbs now we don't know that espn college game day is going to be there for sure yet they're not going to announce that till the week before but if things hold serve you would think so and amanda you picked tennessee to beat Ala, excuse me you picked tennessee to beat georgia from the get i imagine you only feel as strong because other than an, an a weekend blowout of vanderbilt georgia has looked very vulnerable tennessee has looked very good yeah, and I, I mean, I'm, I think I'm the only person here that thought that Tennessee could make it a ten and two season, and now, you know, at at bare minimum, and I now, I mean, Tennessee could go all the way; they could go undefeated. We have no idea. I think they'll drop one game. I'm not sure which one it'll be to. Maybe they'll overlook Kentucky a little bit um, in in getting that Georgia game. But this this you know offense is unstoppable. There's no defense that can keep up with it not in the nation there's there's no way and I think that's what Hypel has again that's what Hypel has done that's what he has brought um, to this program that has been much needed but I I don't see Georgia being able to stop him either and when you look at defense you know offense versus offense you're going to take Tennessee's offense every single time it's who can put up the most points I think that's what we we've now seen from Tennessee and from I mean, really anyone in the SEC, it's who can put up the most points in that. I mean, obviously, it's Tennessee. Big show on tap. We'll uh, visit with Marlon McKinney, the author of Ball Stuff that wraps up all the Tennessee news in one day on offthehooksports.com. Also, also Chris Landry of LandryFootball.com. And, you know, they don't play each other. And I think wins and losses attached to quarterbacks is absolutely stupid. But the simple fact is, if you've got Hendon Hooker or Stetson Bennett in your corner, which direction are you going? I think that's an obvious answer. I don't think that's even a question. Yeah, Uh, Stetson Bennett, great story. Again, I would I would like to write the book, but it doesn't mean he's a great quarterback. And uh, Georgia has looked uh, pretty defeatable. Some other comments. Hyatt reached legend status. This is from Brittany and then some on Saturday. 
uh, innocent uh, culprit says hi. It reminds me of Peerless Price, probably a, a little taller and longer than Peerless Price. Um, the uh, innocent culprit said the separation height gets is incredible. Absolutely, he's fast as all get out. But let's not overlook what Josh Heupel is able to do. Uh, Brittany feels like Bryce Young's teammates did him a disservice. Not that I'm complaining. I don't. Um, what did you think of the surrounding cast offensively? For Alabama, pass protection was not great, uh, but I like Tennessee dialed up some great blitz pressures to overcome a pretty beleaguered secondary. So pass protection wasn't great. Um, there was one slant route, I believe, in the second quarter that was dropped that the guy may score from eighty because he was bare. Um, I, I, I thought that uh, I thought that Bryce Young made that offense go, and if not for him. You're talking high 20s, low 30s type of score. Amanda, would you disagree, agree with that? Uh, no, I wouldn't disagree with that. I think him and uh, Jameer Gibbs, I think, are the two the two players that, that took Alabama's offense on their backs. Uh, this is another thing that Caleb and I were talking about on Friday. Um, the play calling wasn't exactly that great again. Once again, you have Bill O'Brien, you have Bryce Young in the, you know, back in the pocket scrambling for his life every single play. And and that that is just ridiculous. Like it is ridiculous. Again, if you had Josh Heupel and Bryce Young together, they would be unstoppable. We've said it before, Bill O'Brien is just not he's not good at, at what he does. He's just not he needs to leave. Alvin, he needs to go somewhere else and, and do something different. Well, he is – there are only so many things. There's a difference between a college and NFL coach, and there are only so many things that you can do in, in the NFL that you can do in college because of the freedom for your offensive line to release. And I don't think that Bill O'Brien has really ever accepted that as a full part of his RPO package. So I think he's hamstrung by traditional NFL thinking – even though he's been a college coach for a number of years. And he just feels like an NFL coach in a college game. And they're almost two different games now. I mean, they, they, they really are vastly different. So I worked in the Big Ten. It worked while he was at Penn State. It just does not work in the SEC. It just doesn't. Right. And the Big Ten is more along the lines of NFL-style offenses, ex with the exception of Ohio State. And why are they dominating? So, uh, John said, can't blame O'Brien, put up near 600 yards of total offense. That, to me, was more, and I'm curious your thoughts on what Tennessee was able to do offensively. That, that to me, was, was more hypo, more the fact that we underrated this offensive line. And we all had to underrate the receivers from at the beginning of the season because who would have thought that Cedric Tillman's out and they're just simply still explosive? Um we don't underrate them now. We don't underrate them last week. But if you would have told me that Tennessee had one of the absolute best sets of receivers in August, I would have said, nah, top 20. But now they're top three. Is he talking about, he said Bill O'Brien uh, put, like, Alabama put over 600 yards of offense? Is that what he's saying? Because he said, I'm Bill sorry. Yeah. Maybe I miss, yeah. Okay. Bill O'Brien put up 600 yards of total offense. So, so let me get your take on that. Correct. Uh, so, no. However, that's not necessarily because of the play calling. That's because Bryce Young is that good. I mean, I honestly, that's what it is. It's it's Bryce Young being that good and doing what Bryce Young can do. I mean, he put on just a, an amazing show back there when he had very little help. And we know that Tennessee's, you know, DBs aren't – they're not up to, to par. I mean, they're, they're mediocre at best – that should have been something that Bill O'Brien could have capitalized on, but he, but he couldn't. Bryce Young did everything back there. Bill O'Brien should have had, like, distinct plays and routes that would have really embarrassed the mediocre, you know, corners that, that Tennessee has, but, but he didn't. Never Bryce Young did it all. I'm sorry. I've never seen a better college football player in my life that keeps his eyes downfield while the pocket is collapsing around him and while he has to scramble outside the pocket than Bryce Young. 
And there were times actually last year I thought he did it to a fault that he should take off and run. I didn't see any of those on Saturday. I, th- his ability to keep his eyes downfield is absolutely unbelievable. So the down and dirty at 30 before we get to Marlon McKinney of uh, ball stuff on off the hook sports. Uh, congratulations to Jalen Hyatt. Uh, he picks up a an absolutely fantastic award, the Walter Camp Award that goes weekly to the uh, top player in college football. And then talking Cruton, Tennessee is landing commitments in the class of 2024. Four-star Mizeo Bennett committed the balls on Sunday. Bennett is ranked as the number 30 wide receiver in the class of 2024. Showing a lot of love to South Carolina because he's in Greenville, Alabama, and Georgia also in the mix, but it looks like Tennessee, and it's very, very early. I don't need to remind you of that. It, it looks like Tennessee is off and running with their 2024 class. That would be three commitments and a lot of pressure. I was watching uh, probably like 3 a.m. last night when I couldn't sleep, and uh, you have prospects going after Boo Carter of Chattanooga, um, and – yeah, there, there is a sense that Tennessee is recruiting itself now, and that hasn't been that case in a long, long time.